So I have a job of introducing someone who's already very well known, uh, in not only in Thailand but internationally. <coughs> he also has a, a gallery, you probably all know, Kathmandu, to help to support, uh, promote Thai photographers. So, what else can I say? I mean, <laughs> you must, you know, you know him already, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Um, but just one thing I want to, to say about him is that most, what differentiates him from most Thai photographers is that uh, most photographers in here, they were just very involved in themselves and now and again they would look far away for inspirations, South America, Europe, Europe or something. And, but Madit actually looked back at his back garden <laughs> in Thailand and on the surface there's not much in terms of photography in Thailand. But uh, he actually dug deep into all the old materials and go through, went through uh, thousands of negatives and, and found how uh, we don't have to go very far to inspire ourselves and a lot of Thai people, all Thai photographers, actually how we express ourselves, how we see our society in those days. I think that's very uh, interesting for, for us, even for Thai people to, say, to see, but I'm, there's no Thai people here. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, I hope uh, this is what he will be uh, presenting to you today, and I hope that it will inspire us all to to look deeper at what we already have, rather than look too far away from ourselves. Thank you very much for Hun Jane and Peter, Nakap. And also, thank you very much for uh, Siam Society for uh, giving me an, an, this is an honor moment for me because I never imagined that I'm going to stand here and talk about this uh, subject. Because you know that Siam Society for me is like something really high and really far away. Only the academic uh, and scholar can be able to give a talk. But anyway, that's why I have to admit up front that I'm not a historian nor academic. So I just um, try to do something to answer my question. The question that I've been uh, is stuck in my mind so in many years since I've been teaching in uh, photography to many university, and I found, I found myself that I have to translate uh, many uh, stories about the Western photographer, so that you can name it. But for me, I think if photography came to Thailand since, I think, uh, 1984, six years after the invention of this uh, media, medium. I think it's quite, Thailand quite, if imagine about six years after invention of this medium, it means that Thailand quite advanced in this term. So my question uh, occurred to me that why we never have like, we call like a master, master. And when you, when you come to the term what does it mean, master? What is your definition? Something like this is also, it challenged me to try to, uh, uh, try to find out, try to answer this question for myself. So uh, from now on, that what you're going to see is, is what um, I have been found in the past, uh, since 2010. So I'm about five years that I, I been doing this uh, project. It started um, people, I mean, when you're asking why you have to know about history, this is the most important. Um, I try to imagine, try to, every time I try to explain that if have, I mean, when you look at the tree, 
if you want to be a big tree, when you when you know when the tree shoot up to the sky, and you know how deep of the root it have to be really deep, to be able to go up high, and you have to go really deep. That is for me. It's very simple to explain myself. That if I want to go really high on the sky, about myself, about my work, so I have to go really deep. You know, this is the most important. That why we have to know about ourselves, especially in Thailand. That history is not something that uh, is not in. I don't want to say that it's not part of our culture, but it's not being in encouraging to to do that. People tend to throw away their own story because they think that they're not so important. One, you never look that you're so important. Your history, it, it doesn't matter. It, it just, you know, you just throw away. So that's why, when I look, when I look there uh, and working on this project, I realize that uh, many photographers that I I want to look for the work. Family, when I when I call their family, their family they already say they throw away. They, you know, I mean it's stop because nobody think this is important. When you never think that your life important, then you don't you don't care about what's going on into your life, and that's why you see that sometimes you you question why people on the street. They don't wear the helmet. Why? Why the police keep fighting to tell people to wear the helmet? Because nobody wants to, to wear. No, because of because they think their life is just who care. If you don't care about your life, so you can do anything that you like. So it means that I try to try to find a way how to to understand my own culture through history. It's not just about the story of. Certain people, but to see power of the history can can change, can change your your mind, can change the way you you live. This is why it's so important to me that I uh, I spend um, after I've been let's say been recognized uh, internationally. I'm I'm not happy. What's going on in in my field? When I have exhibition in my field, I compare to let's say China. I went to exhibition. I found that many Chinese photo artists, photographer, they have work exhibit. But when I go, I just go alone. I say, I'm not happy that I'm just alone in this field. And then what can I do? This is something that why I have to have. I have to run my own gallery. I have to do like this, this kind of the project because I think that we have to do something to be able to 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 nurture, to make something, you know, to be able for the new generation, you know, to be able to to learn, you know, from what I'm been I'm been try doing. Um, Okay, this is very interesting. That when I start uh, uh, my project, when I came, I have this question in my mind. One day in 19, oh no, 2010, I have an exhibition with this guy. Oh, sorry, uh, this photographer S. S. Lim. S. S. Lim, I met him. Or uh, at the exhibition, very funny. In 2010, and this is a six, I mean, 50 year, 50 years uh, celebration for the 50 year anniversary of the uh, uh, Royal Photo uh, Photographic Royal Photographic Society, and the the uh, the Princess Ubon came to open, you know, the exhibition. And I remember her very funny. And now people probably uh, are talking about I mean, her story more than any time. Um, and I met 
small guy, short and very skinny, you know. He looked like a very old man and he just almost 80. And they say, what uncle, what are you doing? And he showed, this is my work. And when I look, I'm look, I look, oh, that's amazing. I mean, his work. I say, can I go to see your more, I mean, of your work? That uh, maybe I want to learn more. And then, I mean, luckily that he have, uh, his house is just next to, not, not far from my gallery. And I went to his, uh, his um, shop house. He lived in a shop house. And I went there, and you know, he said, okay, uncle, can you show me something? And he said, it's over there. It's covered with dust and everything. When I look at that, oh my God, what can I do? Then, okay, slowly he I mean, showed me that. And I said, can I show you your work into my gallery? I said, are you, what, what are you talking about? You know, he, no, he said, no, nobody care about this. It's just only, because I know that um, he, he, ne he never, he know his work, he, he, he value his work, and quietly he value his work. He never throw that away, but he never really imagined that any other people can see it. Because why? Because when, um, when I organized exhibition, his friend, his peer, about 80, the, they came to the opening, and they say, oh, this is, this is the art, this is art for you? I say, yes, this is art for me. For them, they surprise. And can you sell this? I say, yes, why not? I can sell. And how much? I, I, I tell the number and they say, oh, that's expensive. And I, I, ask, I ask his friend, don't you, I mean, I mean uh, is, uh, this is, you're, you're not happy for your friend that your friend can sell? And they, they got shocked because for, the, for him, you know, especially for S.H. Slim, he hang out with his, his friend and his friend never considered his work as an art. That's it's very interesting because most of his friends, uh, they, you know, they are member of the uh, uh, photographic society. Uh, we call salon. Salon have a certain style, certain taste about beauty. Or, or about the photography. When they call art photography, they have certain definition, certain test, certain style that they consider is art. But work like this, they don't consider it's art. They think this is commercial, this is just for a magazine. And for me, this is amazing. When you look at this, Pawana Chanachit, this is when she like 20 something, and she jump up the sky, this is just like a you know, it's like liberating. When you look at his work, it's amazing how he portray uh, women. Imagine this is uh, in uh, 1960. And when you look at, when you look at this, this is the first uh, Miss Universe, a Thailand Miss Universe, you know, Apasala Hong Sakun. Yeah, when she, uh, when she won it and she got a title. And this is um, yeah, Apasala, and this is, you know, it's reflecting uh, um, time and, and uh, uh, social condition and so on. I think this, this work is telling a lot of story. And I, go, I have to go very quick because I have a lot of slides for you. And this is, you see how, how it works. Uh, and those days, they, they, they still, um, they don't have, uh, they didn't have the, um, uh, let's say, uh, offset printing yet. So this is, um, they, they call block printing, that they have to color. They have to do, uh, they separate, they have to do the coloring, you know. It's very interesting, this is, you know, this is James Bond. Yes, he inspired by James Bond. And this is him, and with the, uh, with the model that he photographed. This is a Pechala Chawalat. Uh, she one of the most famous uh, actress, and she this year she 
she won the uh, the national artist yeah. and this is him so uh, yeah when he after i mean in many years like uh, he first time he have her solo show in his life mm. the next one i think this is important um uh rong wong sawan rong wong sawan he uh, he uh, he uh, the national artist in in literature not photography uh he start photography be before he became uh, a novelist you know and he uh, before before he became writer and it's very interesting because he start when he like 20 and he spent about 10 year working for the siam lat sabda uh, vichan you know and then after that he quit photography to become a full time writer because at that time photog photographer is not a is not a career that you can make money if you are a writer then you can make a lot of money and and luckily and he good and he very creative writer he became so popular and, and he one of the most uh, uh, one of the uh, very very outstanding writer he can mix between the western words um, i mean english words and the, and the thai and this is uh, his work uh, very unfortunate i i i i couldn't have uh, uh, we found uh, very few uh, negative that he left but from what the series that uh, he left it showed how 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 creative i mean he was I mean, because he passed away uh, in 2009 um, and when you look the way how he used uh, angle you know a uh, camera angle you can tell that he very very uh, uh, experimental uh, photographer he so he experimenting uh, way uh, in photography and I think his composition is still like for me is still uh, pioneer still very outstanding This is a uh, you know the um, Rama Rama first bridge, um, if you they call a memory bridge bridge. And you see that he he play this this is a uh, Dindang Dindang uh, um, district. It was it was then it's just like you know a slum. This is a very first slum of Bangkok before it clean up to be like. Near the victory, uh, near the the victory monument. This is very interesting to see. You know, like like any big city like Paris that they used to have a slum and then they move, push, push out, out, out. And this is very, very interesting. And this is imagine. Uh. This, especially this photograph, I don't think that we can publish this anymore. In the, in especially with a naked <laughs> girl, uh, very unfortunate that uh, in our photograph in, in I mean in those days, this kind of you know girl running around like this, boy running around like this, you know. But today we can't show this kind of photograph. This is a uh, um, Pramod, one of the pri Thai prime minister. Yeah, he very young, right? Eh? Handsome, handsome guy. Yeah, and this is when uh, his work published in the Siam Lat Sabdawijan cover. And this is a uh, when you look at that, imagine in 19. Uh, this is uh, 19 uh, around uh, 60. Uh, or even 1957, uh, you know, this is Thailand like this. It's like a fairy tale story. This kind of a picture, you know, when you look at that, this is Thailand. I mean, luckily that I born and I, I grow. I mean, when I born, is this Thailand still like this? And I'm, I'm lucky that I, I mean, I'm, I experience this kind of culture that. 
uh, we call water water culture, um, and you know when they have a temple fair, you know, and you look the way how he use a camera, you know he, and the way how he capture. And the next one, the third one, this is uh, uh, Ling Yu. Ling Yu, he um, he was born in 1911. Um, you know, he he uh, he's, uh, he born in, in Phuket, and he studied in you know in in Penang, and he he born in, at a Chinese you know, but born in Thailand. And he opened his uh, studio in 1933. So he, at that time, I mean, when, you know, when boy already 20, they have to have job, they have to have to do some, some business. And he uh, chose to be a photographer, opened his own uh, 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 Photoshop, you know. And it's, uh, he, you know, it's him. He, yeah, he look handsome, and he, you know his work. Uh, how how I found his work? I think it's because of um, through through friend that uh, uh, told me that about this the uh, the collection the 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 uh, glass negative. This uh, all work is still glass negative. He um, he used the uh, glass negative since he opened his uh, studio. And and I think glass negative uh, stopped producing in about mid uh, 1970. Um, but when you look at the uh, uh, work, it's quite interesting. Uh, for me, Ring Yu uh, collection, one of the most important collection, because Ring Yu uh, his photo studio became so popular in Phuket. And at that time, Phuket is, you know, business uh, or, or industry that Phuket known is about tin mine. So the tin mine, this is uh, one of the uh, important in, in industry that uh, uh, make Phuket became one of the richest island in, in Thailand. And, and people, you know, have money and then they go to get picture done. And for me, this this is this is uh, represent the era that the, the uh, Phuket before tourism. That's why it's so important for me because if you go to Phuket today, you can't imagine this is no. This is Phuket is today totally different. It's another world. So the world that you're looking now is the world of P tourism. So this is uh, important that why when you look at the photograph and you learn about it, it's the uh, people, I mean, uh, the way that their lifestyle before, I mean, tourism come and, and they, they try to be modern. And because Phuket so modern because of the close to Singapore, you know, people, people more close to Singapore and close to the outside world. And Phuket become like a cosmopolitan because so many uh, Westerner and also uh, even among uh, in this region, from India or from Sri Lanka, they you know they mobilize in 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 Phuket. So when you look at this set of photograph, I will show you another another set of uh, photo studio inland, not this is island, the inland. So you will see that how uh, uh, even people, you know, different. Yeah. This is for me, this very, very cute, very, you know. And this, I mean, this is, in my day, I remember that my sister had to wear like this, you know. Everyone wear like this, you know, and this is like you know the imi uh, the imitation of the the adults, you know, the, when they have a chief, 
go to my, you know. And this is everyone have to dress up. And you know when, even if you don't have jacket or yourself, you have to, you know, the studio provide jacket. And you say that people just probably come, uh, I mean, or uh, come back from from the from the mine and just get into the studio. And you will see that this is very. You will see that the wedding, wedding photo also important. And you can tell what, I mean, who they are, and what they believe. You know. And you look at this, I mean, you, you don't believe this is, this is Thai, but yes. So you will see that uh, Phuket is so cosmopolitan. Um, and the style. And this, this is a shop that uh, I went there in many years ago when during my, my research. And I went there, this is how I, you know, it's still left. Uh, because now the Photoshop there, they have no business. And only business they have is photocopy because nobody go to Photoshop anymore. So um, but the family still, still keep it, you know, everything like the, I mean, when the father is still there. And you look at this, all the boxes, you know, in inside boxes, they are uh, glass negative, and you can you can see that you know this is a glass negative. Glass negative is very strong. You know, I uh, if if you use your uh, they call gelatin gelatin negative. You know, it's not last long. It's especially in in this climate, it's damaged easily damaged and. Uh, after a certain time, it's, still, it's melting and it's because when it go to the heat and it's, you know, become, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's easily that it's very difficult to, I mean, to take care. I, my early negative is also damaged, uh, even though I put in a, de, I mean, dehumidifier uh, uh, cabinet. <clears throat> so, um, when I'm talking about the Phuket, it's very interesting that a story similar to in, uh, in, in the U.S., they found a, a, um, a negative by, by a photographer called himself, this farmer, because he, uh, his family, his family uh, last name of farmer, but he didn't, he didn't want to be a farmer, so he called himself this farmer. So, that's why he became photographer, and he left only about five thousand negative. And to today, uh, many museum show his work. But when I look at uh, this farmer work, I compare to Ling Yu negative. Ling Yu much much higher in terms of the quality, a, a way how he photograph, a way he setting light setting, and everything in terms of the aesthetic. Ling Yu, no. Second to no one. I think this is, and he left about at least 50,000 negative. Imagine that if you set up the museum, and you, I, I, I'm, I'm keep telling people that uh, you should keep the negative there and set up the museum. Keep this, this studio. You don't have to do anything. You just keep it like this and open to the public, and you just sell the print. You can survive, but because they need a management, and, and we 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 still this is another issue that we don't we don't know uh, we don't good at the, in terms of cultural management, and so uh, I that why family sold uh, about twenty thousand twenty thousand negative to uh, to uh, a Spanish guy. And what actually that the Spanish guy, he know he value this, and he asked my friend to take care of the negative. He he didn't want to take out from from the the, the from Phuket, so he left to my friend. And now my friend try to promote his work, 
and slowly that we try to help each other and he opened his own museum you know that uh, something like this we it start from you know when we try to promote uh, uh, photography like this what that what I'm trying to do I and I can tell you that Mom Luong Toy Chum Sai he the early nude photographer and, and during uh, about the, the 50 I think he uh, he is one of the uh, very very interesting person because he uh, he a writer he a uh, he himself, he a politician, and he done so many things. He's so talented person, multi-talent, and, and he also good photographer. And you know, he uh, he, he he photographed only nude, and very interesting because uh, when I I introduce him in my exhibition, and slowly that his work came out to free market, to the free market. And the free market, you know, the price went up because of, you know, when people realize this is uh, important. Um, it's also somehow, I never know that who collect his work. And one day my friend called me from free market that, hey, I found a photo album. I think, I believe this is a Mom Long Toy work. And I say, okay, send me the picture. And I say, okay. Then, okay, this is album. It, some say it came out from the uh, one the Thai general of that time. I mean, they call General Sarit. Sarit, who, you know, he one of the, one of the famous dictator and who very womanizer and he loved uh, women. So, and he collect uh, on this uh, album. So I don't know the story but that was true or not, but the, the interesting that uh, this photograph, this album came to me. I just, it just happened, it came to me, then I, 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 have, I have to buy it for my collection because I, I don't want this just go out and disappear. And I think slowly I learn more about his work. And even the uh, contact sheet, the way how he worked, I, I bought a contact sheet uh, from the free market. And, and you look at this, a way how he looked at the, I mean, Thai women. And my show, my, this collection uh, now exhibiting at the NUN in Singapore. And next month it's gonna go to, to Malaysia in KL. And the curator, co-curator, told me that Manit Mom Long Toy might be have a problematic might be a prob because uh, they they say they can't show nude photograph. Okay, what can they do? Because I mean ninety percent of his work has a is just naked body. <laughs> what can you do? I say you have to do something. So I have to dig up I mean any no, any any uh, picture that have you know cover on. And you look at this, and then you think about you, you're talking about Edward Weston. Edward Weston is just like classic for the U.S. You know, or American photography. And you look at this. I don't know, I, I can't say that he inspired by Edward Weston or not because the time when he produced is almost uh, similar. And I don't know how much, how fast the, uh, the, uh, the media and then the magazine, the photo magazine, or uh, I mean travel. And also something like this, I don't know who inspired him. But for sure that, and something like this, you look, I mean, the way how he play with he, I think he know about a lot of art, you know, I can see. And this, uh, this is um, the album Lep. Uh, I, I found this uh, collection because of he, 
he left for uh, I mean his his grand his grandson Ten Chum Sai Ten Chum Sai he uh, 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 keep this uh, album with him and one day I contact him because I I know this story because I used to work in commercial so I know that his son Momlung uh, Momlung Toy Chum Sai his son is Siya Sak Chum Sai and Siya Sak Chum Sai also uh, uh, keep this collection and and gave it to, to his grandson. So his grandson gave it and hang it in his office and they say, can I show this to, to the public? And then he very, very, I mean, very happy to allow me to, I mean, show this to the public because I say this is important uh, collection. And now come to the, I'm talking about the Inland Studio and this is Pon Sak Sak Dan Price. And I met him very funny because I'm also a filmmaker. Also, we, Ying, uh, my wife and I, we are uh, making a, a movie called Shakespeare Must Die. And the leading role, I mean, the guy who, who, who was the leading role, I, it happened that he came from Pimai. And I just toy, I just try to. I mean, I am ask around when I do this kind of project, I ask around, well, do you know any photo uh, studio, maybe in your village, maybe in Pimai, you, do you have? And he say, brother, my, oh, my dad. I say, oh, are you joking? He say, serious, you come to my dad, my dad's house, and to see maybe it might, it would be, I mean, it might good for you. And then, okay, one day I decide and I go, and I, I went there and I, I, for me like this, he's still alive, he's 81. And this, when I found it, I, for me like, wow. When you look at this photograph, if, let's say if I put the title like this is like Thai Hank William or Thai Elvis or Thai something, you know, Thai pop singer, it can be on the cover. So, when you look at this, and you look, both of them wear the same jacket, and the same watch, and the same cigarette. <laughs> so, for me, it's very interesting. <laughs> you see? It means, the, imagine the time that when you go to Photoshop, it's just like you go to shopping mall. You go to do something together. It's a, it's a fun time to go together and do something like, and you see, this, I don't know how, how, I mean, how many guys wear the same jacket, the same watch, you know, and, and you see the jacket like this, like, you know, they, they, tend, they pretend they're a movie star or, a, I mean, a, a pop singer or whatever, you know, and then look at this. To me, it's, it's very interesting because when I interviewed him, he said, you know, they form, they form, they form the field, they form the, uh, the right field. They just finish the right field, you know, they, they work in the, in the field and then they came to the studio. Everyone have a dark skin, you know. They all, you know, they look very really rough, you know, so. It's my job. I have to make them, you know, I have to make them look good. And that's why they, they come to me. And then everyone, I mean, they, come, uh, they went to him because of, you know, it's a good time for, the, for them that they can be together. And they have, you call in, 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 uh, in U.S., they call Godak moment. This is probably Godak moment for them, you know. It's, uh, it's very interesting to see and and look at the backdrop, because this is in the village, and then the black dog, uh, backdrop is just like the city. So this is a way how you become modern. You know, you pretend that you are, you know, you are modern, uh, modern guy. And then you, you notice that people here, they're not, they're not much different because the rich, they're more like Khmer, because of, you know, Pimai have the Khmer or a temple, 
and also inferring by Khmer culture. And when you look at them, they totally, they just like very uh, look, they're not, uh, you, you can't tell that they are from different race. <laughs> and they're really good. And, and this is something is very funny. This boy, especially this boy, this boy, ask, his mom worked in the U.S. He asked the money for mom to send the money to him, and he want to want to he want a radio, because at that time they don't have a television. Still, very very rare. I mean, the very signal not good. At that time, radio is the only one device that they can people can connect to the outside world and also listen to the music they love. So this boy asked mom, send me the money. And, um, and mom say, you have to take photograph to prove that you spend money for the radio. So then he went and this he had to, to do that. And, and this is amazing for me, just like, and look at the little girl. <laughs> And you know a story that um, the um, um, this negative they need a lot of retouch because of you know the skin uh, they need a lot of uh, I mean today we call Photoshop in the old day they have to do do some kind of like scratching the negative to and and also cover with chemical to make the skin look. Defi I mean, refine and so on. And even you, you see, this is, when you look at this, it's more interesting to come to see this. This is the monk. And this become uh, something very unique that I found because you see, this is before and after. One day, a monk came to him, say, I want, I've I'm, I'm been a monk for many years and I want to know how I look like if um, I. I, uh, I go out from the monkhood. So, and then he said, okay, let's try. And then when he tried, he produced this, you know, this uh, on after, you know. And then why, why, he, why that monk asked him? Because and he hoped that he's going to give photograph to a girl that he liked. So how? So this is a way that, you know, if you're a monk, you, if you, if you find the girl that you like, you can, you can keep the future picture that okay, this is how I look like when I, you know, when I'm not a monk anymore. Okay, this is, this is very interesting. And then it became, and slowly that his friend, I mean his monk, I mean, friend came to came to um, Ponsak to do the same, you know, <laughs> and and before and after to. For me today, we call this is very conceptual, right? You know, at that time, in this is uh, in 1960, 60, 68 or 69 something, you know, and this. <coughs> the other day, or uh, last week, he called me. He said, "Manit." anyone interested in to buy my negative. I, what can I say? I, this is the same story like in Phuket. This would be a good collection for Pimai City if the mayor understand how to maximize your cultural heritage. This is a cultural heritage if they understand but very unfortunate, only people like me can understand, not them. So he called me that, can you find someone to buy me a negative, buy my negative? And I just sent a note to, to my Singaporean friend that if you know any good collector who would treat this negative well, maybe I have to sell, I have to help him sell the negative. I, I mean, I'm alone, I can't, because how much money that I have to buy and I have to carry, you know, I already, 
have to have to do this, and and I I hope that uh, I would find someone who really care about this kind of yeah. It's 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 not that ancient. It's not that, but still, it this is a uh, our heritage, and this is this is a way how he keep, and um. I probably maybe in uh, within two weeks I have to go and sort out. I mean, uh, try to categorize the uh, negative for him and to you know maybe sell some, keep some. I don't know. Anyway, and then this is uh, among seven. This is I, for me one of the most amazing. Uh, um, set, I mean, photograph. Puttata Bhikkhu, I know if you study Buddhism, you know Buddha Dasa, we call Buddha Dasa, right? Uh, he is one, for me, one of the great uh, contemporary uh, monk that I, I think is, who try to clean up the teaching. Teaching, Buddhist teaching today is so mess up so dirty, so he tried to come and clean up, try to make it to the essence, go to the essence of the meaning of the of the teaching. I think this is the most important that certain time you need monk like that. That like in the I mean in in Catholic or in, in, in Muslim that you need someone to clean the teaching that they so been manipulated, those they've been used by I mean are uh, very, you know, by the uh, to make them gain the power or by the corrupt people, and this is uh, for me interesting because of this is the only monk so far. After I exchange my uh, information with the uh, uh, French curator who been traveling around the world to find. Uh, uh, interesting uh, photography they call vernacular vernacular photography and he said this is important because uh, our Buddha Dasa used photography helping teaching the, uh, the, 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 the Dhamma so this is interesting how, how monk can use the, this Dhamma uh, this set we call the uh, <clears throat> uh, the um, the uh, the Tama text next to the image. The, he he made a set a set of this work when he when he was six, 66 in 1972. He started a project because one day uh, a young novice came to him that oh master I heard that you know about photography can I can, can I borrow your camera and then Buddha Dasa said okay you can try. And after a week later, and he, he called that novice come boy, I think I, I teach you how to use that. And at that time, in the 70s, imagine that even in the temples you have no power, only generator. When you want to make you know, open light, you just have to start a generator. So it means that when you switch off light, everything dark. So uh, Buddha Dasa make a dark room in the in the forest, and he ma he know how to use photography. In even in uh, during the World War Two, he he can modify the equipment, and he very good in that. that because uh, Buddha Dasa himself believed that art helping uh, help he, help people. I mean, help him to teach. Tama, like in the ancient time that you go to the Ajanta cave or you know that they already use art helping teaching people because art helping people to get into the point, give me understanding uh, the, the teaching well. So for him it just like this he he and you see I mean a way how he set himself instead of using uh, other subject and he used himself because why? Because he said when he become known, people always come and ask him for photograph. Can I get your photograph? Because Thai people want to have the uh, you know 
a photograph of monk and a king hanging in the house, you know. And for him, he said he, he don't believe in that kind of practice, but he can't insist them because if he want to give people his photograph, he will keep with tamma with teaching. So he, that's why he came came up with the idea that he have a photograph and his a poem, you know, and he wrote a poem. And this is, and he keep he kept uh, doing this until he passed away, and he left about. Um, about maybe about 30 album, about uh, four, maybe 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 about 400 400 poem, you know, that he left when he passed away. And this is look at the way how he he set himself. He know he act, you know, on the left hand and the right hand, and then he sit and talk. He talk to himself. This is this is how he 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 teaching about Tamma because he just talking to himself, and then you know that he, you know, on um, and this uh, this this is like this is the question, this is the answer. This this guy ask and this guy answer, so it's all way like this, like this. You know, it's it's very interesting. The same. This is this. Guy ask and this guy answer. This guy ask this and this guy answer. It's him who answer all this question. Hmm. That's what's amazing. And you see that in between, actually this is not the double exposure in by camera, but this is double exposure on printing. They print in in a dark room by you know the cover. Uh, they use two negative. And this is about asking about death and I mean and, and birth, you know. And you see? I want to show that this, this is amazing how he, he came up with this idea. And this is very, if, if, you, if you understand the poem, and he, he, he I mean, he's talking about uh, the moment that he, he uh, in, you know, he uh, uh, enjoyed the, uh, the waterfall, and somehow this is just something about his his inside that how he feel. You know this kind of photograph. If you show like this today, probably you have problem. This is not a proper behave such a monk that you can enjoy the moment, you know. And after him many years when he worked and, and, and he stacked photographs together and because the Sulatani is so humid and all photographs stack, stick together, stuck together. And then, and, and, uh, and the novice run to the master, master, what are you gonna do? We, should we throw away? And he said, no, no, no. And he just take it out and then, okay, I can use that. I can use it. So that's why, I mean, he's so advanced in terms of today, artists try to scratch, try to rub, try to make it look like, you know, a lot of texture, but for him, he, he can see beauty from that uh, decay about the ruin. Uh, And uh, at the, uh, his, he have a foundation in uh, near the Jatuchak uh, uh, market. You can go there and you can ask to buy his book. It's about three, three volume. It's really thick, like this, three volume. It's very interesting, but very unfortunate, no translation. But you can enjoy the photograph. 
And this is uh, the last guy that I'm going to show you, uh, Sang Chan. Sang Chan also, he born in 1924 and passed away in 1997. Um, he, he, uh, his photograph, he was really lucky because of one of the guy who remember him that he was a, I mean, local phot uh, uh, photographer. This is him when he was young and he looked handsome. And, and this is his work. And this is uh, because um, Sang Chan, he had to work in the office. He said he tried to get job that he can travel and he can, I mean, he can live outdoor. And this is, I mean, what a good job, I mean, what a job is good for him, his photographer. And then, yeah, he, he became a photographer and he approached, back then people go to the beach, you know, and they look for photographer. It's him just hang around and then, oh. and when, they, uh, when he met, he finished photograph and he, he, I mean, he ride his, I mean, motorcycle and drop it, you know. He, he traveled around in Phuket at that time. And, and this is a theory that uh, he uh, is left to him because one day when he passed away, uh, his wife called his apprentice who, you know, who uh, try, want to learn something from him. And the apprentice, uh, okay, he rang, they say, hey boy, you have to come break very quickly because all of your master negative is on the street. And you know, the apprentice just ran so, so fast to, to be there before the, the, the Saleng, you know, this, the, the grab is collector came and took it. So he, he ran and saved the negative. And um, when we learn, um, I learned more about that because of his wife. You know that he's, uh, he live, he not like, being a photographer and a handsome photographer, and for sure that he loved uh, women, and his wife suffering a lot, and then that is why the story end up throw him. Okay, my life and you finish since the day you die, and everything from now on we end up. We have no karma, so your stuff gone to the street. And this is not just the first story that I heard. I heard this other famous photographer that, I mean, the wife throw away the stuff that husband that they, they say they've been living in this suffering too long and it's enough. It, everything had to finish and then they throw away. And luckily that the apprentice keep this. And this is uh, the collection of when he, you know, uh, go to the nightclub. And this is uh, in the 1960. Uh, you imagine that at that time that uh, the uh, GI, you know, Bangkok, uh, starting introduced the GI introduced the nightlife to Bank to Bangkok to Pattaya and for sure to Phuket. And this is uh, the nightlife in in Phuket. And there's a look at this, you know. So you 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 can you can see. I mean, at that time. This is very funny. You know, he also a very playful photographer. And this is this, you know, he photographed everything. He, for, me, for him, he photographed everything. He said everything is a history for him. So even photographer like him, he say, when he, after he clicked the chatter, this is a history. You know, the moment it became history. This is uh, very interesting to see how he, he followed the, uh, the way how people at that time promote their movie. And this is his, uh, in Talang, this Phuket. You know, some, this photograph looks like in Havana because of the, uh, the vehicle, the, I mean the car. Hmm. And this is Phuket at, back then. And now I show you how it's changed.
And this is the, the set that I, I, I never show anywhere because this is uh, the secret negative that uh, his apprentice try to save because this when today we're talking about the alaki alaki that you know the world famous the, the photographer who photograph nude and you know and the bonded the, Jap the Japanese bonded we are uh, uh, women I mean and and this is uh, the work that he uh, at that time he I, I try to understand how he can be able to talk to the girl, to be able to make them feel relaxed and, photo, and can be able to participate in, I mean, to, I mean for, for photo session. I think this is uh, interesting to see this kind of uh, stuff. Okay, and then I go to, oh, sorry. I I want to show you this stuff probably uh, maybe <clears throat> maybe one of you already uh, uh, see this photograph you know sorry and this is the exhibition that I I put our work together in 2000 uh, 2015 and now this show in in um, in Singapore. I just show you quickly. Open. And this, I'm, I'm surprised that uh, is is it was one of the uh, the most popular exhibition ever happened to Bangkok University Gallery. I. It means the people are hungry about the history, but because they, nobody, I mean, uh, show them about the history. And this is uh, the show that I, I, I found as, it's, it's amazing. The student came, you know, almost every day. This is from Phuket, you know, Liang Yu. And that's a lot of people came for the for the talk. And this is an opening. It's packed. And I never, I never sell my catalog at the opening. And at this opening, a hundred copy gone. Also, I have here too, <laughs> only five copies. <laughs> this. <laughs> so even monk came for the opening. This is a book, and this is uh, in Singapore. So uh, that is for for the talk. Any question? In KL, in, the, in Kuala Lumpur, next opening, I think in May, I think, at the Ilham Il 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 Museum, I think the private museum. The photos that you showed the month and then in the six, the month, did they wear the suits and then the whole wig? Oh, they, uh, he, uh, they wear jacket, but not the wig. The wig is just. Oh, they uh, he, uh, they wear jacket, but not the wig. The wig is just the the technique, the uh, the retouching by scratching the negative. Mm.
have a question about the first photographer because yes. some of his pictures reminded me of pictures that I might have seen in Life magazine in the 1960s. And so my question is, how much influence or how much awareness was there of outside photo trends and how did they influence Thai photographers? Uh, I think they got in print from yeah, foreign magazine for sure. But uh, for me, it's interesting to see how, how photographers uh, adapt and make it became his own. I think this, this is uh, interesting to learn when you, uh, you know, people can get inference to each other, can, can keep inference to each other, but, but then the, the question is how? How can you, uh, how can you make that, that style to become your own later on? And I think he, he already proved that. I mean, and I think he quite, um, um, he, he told me that he, what he done, he just, uh, he just, uh, he just uh, did what he had, you know. Um, can you contextualize it just a little bit? Um, okay, so like the Phuket ones, people are used to seeing sort of voluptuous Thai women in sexy poses, but when these kind of photos were taken, that was before that whole era, so women showing themselves was very unusual. It was not the Thai way, or, or how does it relate to the timeline of you know Thai women getting these all seem so naive and not at all kind of, you know, they were just interesting. Is there a continuum of, of how that worked? I don't know, do you understand the question? So you mean that uh, how women at that time behave? Or it was, this was showing, I mean, this is very innocent. There's nothing kind of sexual. I mean, it's a very erotic sort of, it's a beautiful photo. I was cleaning out my apartment that I'm leaving today, and, and I came across that, it, that photo from your mm -hmm. exhibition, and I just thought, it's so gorgeous, you know, but it, it portrays Thai women in a different way than people started to think about Thai women later on. It, it, so this was more a more innocent period? A I, th I think so. I think, I think about, I mean, you, are, you can see how, how this kind of the innocent laws, you know, getting, you know. At the, you see, even here, even this, it, they try to, I mean, they pretend to be sexy, but they're not really good at. But because of that, it look like, it's, um, it's, for me, like, you, you can look at that and you don't feel anything, like you, you feel that you like it because they're so innocent. They think that they, they try to, they try so hard to be sexy, but because they, they don't have, they don't project, in, I mean, they, they just pretend, they just act, but because they don't have, they, they're not, the, if you're an actor, you have to take from inside out. And, but if you act in it, you just pretend like you are sexy, but actually you're not sexy. So it's totally different. For uh, later on, people maybe know how to how to play with that, how to understand how if you want to do, if you want to be sexy, you have to be sexy from inside out, not outside in. So maybe this is a way how uh, social change and and the uh, the way how people behave, you know. How did you choose which photographers would make it into your exhibition? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> um, when I come to the term when we're talking about master, uh, for me, 
this is uh, very difficult and I have to justify uh, myself when I look at the stuff and I, I look at the body of work and I think this is uh, how, the, how this work, how the, uh, the work that have any social and political impact, not just only the, in terms of the beauty, you know. I, we, we, have, we have photographers who take sunrise, sunsets, and, and, and that is no story. They can make a beautiful photograph, but no story. But my stuff that I, from my perspective, that I want to see Thai society through this stuff. And if this stuff tell me the story, for me, that's, that's, this is already have a meaning. And when I, when, um, people might argue with me, even, uh, for instance, S.S. Lim, his, among his friends, we have a, a different opinion. He say, oh, this is not art for him. I don't uh, argue with this, uh, the people because you can believe what you believe. I believe what I believe because of so on that. So far, if my work, if what I'm, my, from my definition, I try to open as much as possible. I don't, I don't want to, I mean, narrow myself to certain area. And it means that if you, if, it's like if, if you are a filter, if you have only one, one number, it means that you, you cancel so many. Then for me, I have to be really flexible to be open, to be able to understand as much as I, I, I could. Because when you look at uh, my work from this collection, you, have, you understand the past and then you understand today. You see the continuation of the, how society evolved from, from that period to today. This is, uh, for me, history that what meaning to me because it's reflection and it tell me why we act like this for today. Otherwise, history have no meaning. You just, uh, uh, just, uh, just a data, uh, just information. Information itself is not enough. Information have to have function. And this, this kind of photograph have role in the society at the time when it's, when, when it, when it's, uh, it's work. And that is why, for me, I look in more and more, deeper and deeper. And I forgot to show you, I have some sample that I found in the National Archive. Now I'm trying to get the permit. I'm not sure whether I can get it or not because the National Archive have the huge collection, but they don't know how to do with that. And that this people that just sit on, they don't want anyone to touch it. And no one, Thailand is one of the country that who use history less and less and less than any country. If you use history as much as possible, it means that you widen, you open, you, it's a lot of things that inspire, ins, inspiration from the past that can, you know, when you look in television, in Hollywood, they, you know, the story from same story, they already like try to make use of that. This is, this is why when I, I, for me, the National Archive have a very, I mean, amazing stuff, but do look at them, what they've been doing. They just, when I, I, I found, I found photograph of Prince uh, Kampang Pet, the father of railway, uh, road, I mean railway, you know, he make a railway to the whole country. And his negative, he used the uh, binocular camera, and I found that uh, he wrote on the uh, on the on the negative, 1916, and the photograph that he he taken, it's amazing. A photograph of uh, women in the north and tribal in we call Moi Moi in Vietnam, he, tribal in Vietnam, 
and he traveled to uh, Egypt to um, to South Africa. And when you look at the photograph, you 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 may you may think that he, this is a Western photographer. The way he his composition, lighting, is amazing, and and his binocular or uh, uh, photograph produced in a I mean twin photograph, and this is a 3D. Imagine this kind of negative never been shown anywhere. If I show, I'm gonna make it a 3D first time in after a hundred year to everyone to see this. In one hundred year, never been shown to anywhere. Imagine this is this is in the eye of the guy of the prince who travel around the, the region, and everything sit there. Nobody touch it. And I want to do this, and I want to print it big. You can look at a single, and then I want to produce a magnet, uh, a, a binocular to look at, and you can see the three D. And imagine the 3D from 100 years ago. For me, just like, shh, this is, this is my, my passion. That's what I want. I already talked to the family that I want to do this project. But they say, OK, they have to negotiate to the blah, 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 blah. I say, this, this is very discouraged for me. When I show my excite, excitement to them, I say, you know, don't you want to see it yourself? This is amazing stuff. We can make a, you know, a interesting exhibition, travel exhibition for the country. The first time, 1916, when the World War I start. Then you see, you see that, and that the camera that they produce for the army. And he used that because he's an army himself, and then he used the camera. And so many stuff there. And I can make a lot of many story, and that is why when uh, Peter say that I, I dig deep because because we don't know ourselves, we don't really know what we have because we never really look our our in our own house. So if my uh, talk can inspire you, that you just dig down into your own family and build up your own story, and everyone doing the same. I went I, uh, many years ago. I, I walked in, uh, in Tokyo, uh, in a small lane in uh, Tokyo, uh, with my friend, a uh, gallerist. And we walked in, uh, and we found a stack of photo album dumped on, on the street. And I just, OK, flipped through. Wow, that is amazing stuff. And then we, two of us, just take it back, back home. And they say, you know, Japan, they have to throw out because they live in very small space, no space for, for their own story. They have to choose, I mean, what story they want to keep. So they throw that stuff. And, and the guy who, I mean, he probably uh, in 1930, he traveled in many countries uh, for, and oh, maybe in the, in the, in the, in the 40, 40, and I mean, go for the uh, uh, sightseeing for the company, thing like that. And the story, and when I look at this, the guy, and yeah, very, and you know, so very meticulous writing down every, his journey and his photograph. This is amazing story. But very unfortunate, the family have to, to dump it because they all have no space. And we have plenty of space. And you know, but because we, then we don't have a story to tell. And other people have to dump the story out because they have so many stories to tell. I, that, that is one of the, uh, um, the prints, uh, uh, print campaign pet uh, negative that I want to do. And I'm not sure whether I, I, have, I have luck or not, because uh, uh, I might have to deal with the, uh, I mean, the bureaucrat that might not happy that I, you know, touch upon the, uh, you know, the stuff. 
And I mean, for me, when I, I do this stuff, I don't want to do it in a conventional way that, oh, this year he born, this year he doing this, doing that. No, I want to analyze, analyze, I mean, why he do this, why he look a woman like this, like him, he look. And even my question is, Thai people like a monkey that can be imitated, the Western, in this kind of theory, you know, theory about the aesthetic that we're imitating. If aesthetic is belong to human or aesthetic belong to a certain culture. So a lot of question that is challenging for me that if I look at this, if I don't see the name, I think this is a guy, the Western eye. What does it mean, Western eye? What about Asian eye? Or this is about the myths that we just try to, you know, put categorize stuff like people today, like we, we do that. And this is something that I want to also to have that question. And something like this that it needs a lot of, um, I might have to write something that is, might not, you know, make people happy that, okay, you, this, this is not supposed to say something like this. But when I say this, because I want to understand, not because I want to, to look down or I want to, you know, humiliate. No, it's just I want to understand. Like I try to understand why S.S. Lim photograph women like what he, I mean, he did. This is in interesting. I mean, this is, this is a way the eye that who, you know, adore, you know, happy to, to photograph beautiful woman, you know, and the eye that to respect woman and to try to change, you know, to make her, you know, to represent woman in a, in a modern way. Okay, so thank you so much for tonight. Oh, by, by the way, if anyone like to get the book, it's here.